Joshua Walker here with Japan Society. You know, 75 years to this day, to this week, to this year, uh, the bombing of Hiroshima, the bombing of Nagasaki, the first time in human history that an atomic bomb, the most destructive force that mankind had ever made, uh, was used on Japan to end uh, World War II, which we're also celebrating the 75th year of. Um, this has particular resonance to me, uh, given that both my grandfathers, my maternal grandfather, Lewis Graham, uh, who was an Air Force pilot and trained bombers like on the B-29 uh, that eventually with the Enola Gay dropped the first atomic bomb, and my paternal grandfather, Carlton Walker, who enlisted uh, when he was too young uh, to be part of the Army and the Occupation Force of Douglas MacArthur. Uh, to see that legacy uh, 75 years ago and to think about my parents who've been faithfully serving as Southern Baptist missionaries in Japan for 40 years and my own self uh, to become the president of Japan Society and to work to foster U.S.-Japan relations, uh, it's personal. But I think it's not unique to me or my family. It's something that we all share, whether it's Japanese or Americans on either side of the Pacific, to see that 75 years ago we went through such destruction, to see where we are today on the precipice of celebrating an Olympics together, celebrating a world order that has been shaped in many ways by the U.S.-Japan relationship, uh, to see the, the San Francisco uh, Convention that led to the United Nations, uh, the San Francisco Treaty that led to the U.S.-Japan Security Alliance that continues to be enforced today. And to think about how far we've come from the greatest generation. You know, I often think about my grandfathers and the, the shoulders that I stand on in my new position. And to think about how they went from enemies to now uh, my parents working uh, to bring uh, people into the fold and to think about U.S.-Japan relations that I promote uh, through Japan Society and all the programs we do. It's an amazing legacy to carry. It's one that I'm not uh, alone in and that we all share. And we think about uh, how we can engage, uh, educate, and explore the abundance of Japan and so much that the world has to learn from this amazing country and people and of the U.S.-Japan relationship. So I hope that as we pause and take a moment to remember all the horrible things uh, that happened 75 years ago, we also remember the positive side. In crisis, there is always that opportunity. I still remember the iconic uh, picture of President Obama, the first U.S. president to visit Hiroshima, embracing a victim uh, of this uh, horrible uh, atomic attack. And to think about Hiroshima and Nagasaki and Japan itself as a symbol of peace for the future and thinking about how uh, it can continue to work towards that global peace, whether at the United Nations or whether through its development work. I think the U.S.-Japan relationship has really weathered an incredible amount of storms in these 75 years. And we have to really think about how we preserve that legacy so that my grandchildren will be able to look back in the way I look back on my grandparents and think about the amazing legacy that they've given to us and how we uh, can be the stewards of that legacy towards the future. So as we remember Remember uh, today, this week, this year, uh, uh, Hiroshima, Nagasaki, and the 75th uh, anniversary of the end of World War II. I hope we can look towards the future uh, to hopefully, hopefully make that a bright 75 years moving forward as well.